Okay, so today we're going to talk about a sequence of events as it relates to reading passages or books. You can use sequencing events um, with literature text and informational text. Sequencing is the process of telling events or information in a logical order. So typically it's in the order in which they happen or... Um, if it's like a recipe in the order that you need to follow the recipe, um, or if it's informational text, a lot of times it's like history-based and it's chronological order. Sequencing helps readers remember what they read. It also helps them identify when to reread. This contributes to higher levels of comprehension. If you understand the order that it happens in, you're probably going to better understand the story or the information that you have read. Students who can sequence events are more easily to infer an unstated information. So, if you are following how things are going, you can infer. For example, um, little Johnny came home, slammed the front door, ran straight up the stairs, didn't speak to his mother, um, slammed his bedroom door, laid on the bed, and began boohoo crying. Now... In that small little story that I just gave example, um, if I were to ask someone, well, how do you think that little Johnny is feeling? Um, they would probably say upset, sad, mad, and I didn't tell you that he was feeling that way. But based off of the order of events, him coming home, not speaking to his mom, slamming the front door, running straight upstairs, um... Coming, going to his room and slamming the door, going, laying on the bed, and began boohoo crying. That lets us know that something is wrong. And so, when you understand the order of events of when things happen, you can better under, you can better infer how things, you know, things that are unstated. And inferencing is very important in reading because a lot of times the author doesn't give every detail they give small details and leads you to say hmm i wonder how this is feeling that goes into asking answering questions during text but that's a video for another day another time back on task so when you are sequencing, what can you look for? When you are reading, excuse me, what can you look for to help you sequence? There are some keywords, and um, the common, most common keywords are first, next, then, last, or finally. Um, those words let you know that there's an order of something. And later on, we're going to do a uh, use a passage, and we're going to sequence where we're going to look in the passage to look for some keywords. Some other keywords are like um, days of the week. That lets us know that what it was going on and what happened Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That lets us know that there's an order in which things happen. Let's us know that, okay, in the story, this happened on Monday, and then some other things happened, which led to what happened on Wednesday. And so the story starts, you know, sometimes stories or movies start with... Um, on the end like you know you'll watch a movie and then it'll say three days before two weeks earlier this lets us know those are also some key words in sequencing a lot of times you read a book and it gives you the end and then you're like well how do we get here and so then they have to go back and they tell you based off of the timeline what led to that point so stories don't always just go in chronological order you have to sometimes pay attention and say okay hold on well this is the end but what was happening before that let us get to this point um, so when you're reading, there are ways to help you sequence your, um, thoughts or your stories and to put them in logical order. I'm going to give you, uh, two ways. Um, and in one of those ways, I'm going to show you two ways to do that. The first way is timelines. And when you are, um, reading informational texts, especially, uh, they have timelines and, you know, there are two different types of timelines. The first that I'm going to show you is a vertical timeline, and that is from top to bottom. Um, and you start at the top and you go down to the bottom. And this way, 
when you're starting. And so if you're going over days of the week, you might say uh, Monday, this happened, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you're doing dates, you might say um, 1991, 1995, 1997, 2000, 2014, 2015. And so we started at the top with 1991 and we went all the way down to 2016. And so I'm going to show you a um, example of a timeline, a vertical timeline. So here we have an example of a vertical timeline. And so this one has boxes along the way, but the arrows is what tells us how we're going to do uh, first, next, then, and last, or the dates. And so this here, we have um, this arrow. This is the top arrow. So this will be, this box will be your first event. Then then we have this arrow, which is the next arrow. And this will be your second event here, 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 and here. So you have to pay attention to the arrows. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to go in order like this here. No, pay attention to the line and the order in which the boxes come on the line to uh, provide an effective and correct time. Okay, here we have another example of a vertical timeline. Once again, you'll start here and you go here. And so you go in order in which the lines come in. Um, now I'm going to show you a horizontal timeline. So here we have a horizontal timeline. And same thing, they have the arrows. You're going to start at the left and go to the right. And... Um, these arrows let us know we can't just say, oh, I'm going to do this top row and then do the bottom row. No, you have to look in which the line, the arrows go in on the timeline. So here we're starting here. We know that this is the first event, second event, third event, fourth event, fifth event, sixth event, seventh event, eighth event, and ninth event. And so when you're feeling, when you're reading and you're filling in a timeline, you'll start here. And then you'll do the next event. And so you have to pay attention to the arrows. You can't just say, oh, let me just use these boxes. Because if you just use the boxes and say, I'm going to do the first row and the top row, your information will be out of order. And so where you would have done first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, it will be incorrect because they are they have staggered with top and bottom of the events. So when you are reading timelines and filling out timelines, it's imperative that you focus on or you pay attention to which way the, the arrows are going. Timelines are typically for informational text because informational text is typically giving you a history of something and you will... Um, use the timeline to put in dates in the order of which in the order of which things happen but I said that you can also do sequence order for a literary so now I'm going to show you another type of graphic organizer that you can use for a literary text so here we have this graphic organizer and this is a very good graphic organizer especially if you have to write a summary because it gives you the words and it says so we have first Next, then, then, in the middle of the story, afterwards, a little while later, towards the end, and finally. These are good sentence starters when you are um, giving a summary or you have to sequence um, the order of events of a literary story or even an informational text. But this will be a very good one because it says story. Um, for literary, because literary is typically a story and information or more like passages or books but while we're talking about this the sequence of order this here are those keywords that you need to look for in the story or you need to use when you're describing the sequence or order of events so here's an example of another sequence chart and it's a very simple one it has four spaces for first next then and last and um, you would just write the title of your passage. You can write what happened first, what happened next, then what happened, and what happened last. Um, another word that um, we like to teach students is finally. Um, finally is another word for last. And when you are, you know, jotting down the ideas or the order, you know, 
your understanding why things happen. This will also help when we talk about cause and effect, because if you know the order in which it happened, you'll be able to understand why things happen in the story. Um, so this is why sequence is important, and these are ways to organize your thoughts when you are sequence writing. Now we're going to move into our example, where we're going to work it out together. Now we're going to do um, an example of how to sequence and how to, I'm going to show you um, how to look for the keywords that we talked about to um, be able to answer this portion, which is number the phases below in order, in the order given in the story. So our title is Very Colorful Ink. When sequencing a story, look for keywords such as first, next, then, and finally to help you determine the correct sequence. First, the type of berry to be used had to be gathered. Then his strainer was filled with the berries and held over a bowl. Next, using the back of a wooden spoon, the berries were crushed. This caused the juice to strain into a bowl. After all the berry juice was drained into a bowl, salt and vinegar were added to the juice and then stirred. Finally, the juice was stored in a small jar with a tight fitted lid. Not only did students make colorful inks to use, they also made invisible and glow in the dark inks. In early American schools, students used a quill pen and ink to practice writing letters and numerals. Since these schools did not have many supplies, the students often had to make their own ink at home. There were many different ways to make ink. One of the most common ways to use berries, such as blackberries, blueberries, cherries, elderberries, or strawberries. The type of berry depended on the color of ink. Now we're charged with the task uh, of numbering the phases below in the order given in the story. The mixture was stirred. Using the back of a wooden spoon, the berries were crushed. The ink was stored in a small jar with tight fitted with a tight fitted lid. Berries were gathered. All berry juices, all berry juice was strained into the bowl. The strainer was held over a bowl. Salt and vinegar were added to the berry juice. A strainer was filled with berries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to look for those key words that we talked about. First, then, next, and finally. So I already see first here. Then um, I see then, next, um, after is another sequence word because that's giving me some a time reference that it happened after something. And so I'm going to circle after. And then another um, keyword that I see is finally. And so this here, I, I know that I have one, two, three, four, five um, words that help me determine the sequence, the order in which it happened. I have eight options, but this will give me a start into how to sequence. So if I'm looking at my page, it says first, the type of berry to be used had to be gathered. So let me see if that's one of my options. If I look here, berries were gathered. So that's the first thing that happened. Then a strainer was filled with the berries and held over a bowl. So now the next thing I have, a strainer was filled with berries. Now, that's what I'm gonna put two because that was the other thing. But when I look at them, there were two things that happened. It says a strainer was filled with berries. And then this word, and, let me know that there's something else happened after that. And so my third thing that happened was uh, the strainer was held over a bowl, held over a bowl. So I'm going to put a three here. After that, I have next. Um, using the back of a wooden spoon, the berries were crushed. So let me find that option here. Using the back of a wooden spoon, the berries were crushed. So I know that this happened next. After that, all berry juice was strained into a bowl. Salt and vinegar were added to the juice and then stirred. So this was 
uh, three different things that happen and it's going to give me three different um, numbers for my sequencing. So um, after using the back of a wooden spoon, the berries were crushed. All of the berries were strained into a bowl. So that's gonna be number five. Then um, we have salt and vinegar were added to the juice. So we have here, salt and vinegar were added to the berry juice. So that's number six. And then what happened um, after that, uh, it was stirred. The mixture was stirred. So that is number seven. Then we have finally, which is also, uh -oh. then we have finally, which is also another word for last. And we only have one, and let's make sure that they match up. The juice was stored in a small jar with a tight-fitted lid. The ink, which is also the juice because they were making um, the ink out of the juice, was stored in a small jar with a tight-fitted lid. And so that's where I would put eight. So I used the passage to be able to answer this. And so I wanted to show you that you had to go back into the passage to be able to answer your question. You can't just read it one time and then try to figure it out. I had to go back in the passage and find those keywords, and I found five keywords and so that let me know that that was going to at least give me a start of where of how I could sequence the order of events and then what I did was I paid attention to what happened as I reread the passage. Now just a reminder when sequencing you need to look for keywords like first, next, then, last, after, before, um, look for words that give order like days of the week, months of the year, um, year dates. Those all help you with sequencing. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this video and you um, learned how to sequence in a literary and informational text.